Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So today we'll be talking about Lumetri Color, which is a new feature in After Effects. So it came out in the new update for 2015.3. So we'll be taking a close look at it and I believe it's basically the only color correction tool you really need in After Effects because this thing is awesome. So let's go ahead and let's see how we can use this thing. So I'm gonna start from scratch here. Let's go ahead and go up to Effect, Color Correction, Lumetri Color. And let's go ahead and open up the basic correction panel and as you can see we can add some LUTs um, and some other cool parameters are in here but let's go ahead and not even worry about the LUTs um, if you have your own LUT you can go ahead and import that um, but here we have some cool parameters let's go ahead and maybe and lower down the temperature because it's a little bit warmer than it should be and then uh, maybe just expose this up a little bit because it looks a little underexposed or it could be exposed just a little bit better and then uh, let's see maybe we can touch up the contrast a little bit so we can start breaking away our black points and our white points and then um, here maybe the highlights are a little bit too warm for me so let's go ahead and lower that down um, and then maybe raise up the shadows a little bit because it's a little too dark and then maybe um, go ahead and maybe touch the blacks just a little bit so as you can see lumetri color allows us to basically mess with our white and black points and really balance out our image and kind of get a good start because this this right here is actually uh, a good starting point everything is exposed nice uh, nothing looks blown out or nothing looks you know clipped in the shadows um, but another tab I want to look at is the uh, creative tab and this is really cool because you can add some uh, preset looks uh, I'm not a big fan of using preset looks uh, I like building my own grades and stuff like that but you can um, look at this with your own footage and um, you can definitely build some awesome stuff with uh, the looks panel. So let's go ahead and take a look at the faded film property. And I love this effect because it kind of adds like a, a low contrast filter to um, your clip. And I think that's really awesome. So the next effect, sharpen. And I really think they did a great job of implementing this sharpen effect because it doesn't look grainy when you uh, punch it up pretty high. Um, and if we zoom in here, so take a look at the eyes here. And we'll say we want to put up to like 50. Um, it just looks, you know, so good. It makes it look like, you know, everything pops out a little bit more, at least what's in focus. So that's pretty awesome. And then uh, the added vibrance, which I think is awesome. I love vibrance, uh, be, especially like using it in Lightroom. But let's go ahead and crank that up just by a little bit. And man, it just does a little bit, but um, our image is, uh, doesn't have a lot of contrast to it. So anyway, that looks uh, pretty good. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it for these basic controls. Now let's go into um, HDR mode and I'm not going to touch it here because some properties will go away and kind of mess with uh, all the work we just did. So I'm going to close this up and then I'm going to go uh, create a, a new adjustment layer by going to layer, new adjustment layer. And then I'm going to go to the uh, project window. Actually, you know what? Let me just apply the effect real fast. Uh, let's go to color correction, lumetri color and enable high dynamic range and then this little thing pops up where it says you got to set your bit depth to 32 uh, so let's click ok on that and then let's go to uh, project and where it says a uh, b c, uh, b p c um, where it says depth go to uh, 32 bits per channel float and we will click ok and then now we go back to the effect here and uh, you see the creative tab goes away and then our ability to import LUTs uh, goes away as well. So uh, that's all cool. So uh, now we can kind of go here and mess with the um, uh, with our image and have HDR mode enabled. So let's go ahead and jump up the uh, contrast a little bit since now our image was flat and now we can kind of uh, make it look interesting. So maybe I'll punch that up really high. Okay, and then uh, see that highlights are a little too hot. So let's go ahead and maybe bring those down just a little by a little bit. And then maybe we can take it down a little bit further. Uh, maybe go to the whites here. Maybe, and that looks pretty decent. All right, and then maybe go to the saturation. Saturate just by a little bit. You know what, let's come back to that a little bit later because I'm not 100% sure if that's the right thing to do at the moment. Then let's go ahead and open up the, um, let's go ahead and open up the color wheels panel and let's see let's do a little bit of a grade on this so let's uh, maybe bring this down to the blues the shadows to the blues a little bit and that will go through um, and then let's go to the highlights and let's bring that up to like the oranges the red oranges 
and that added a, a little bit of uh, you know tonality to her uh, face, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then also these little controls on the side here. Um, basically, those are other controls for you know exposure. So basically, we can bring down the shadows if we want. We can even bring up the highlights. Maybe I'll bring up the midtones just by a little bit. So it's all pretty cool. A lot of uh, controls within just the color wheel. So I love it. And then uh, the next thing I want to look at is the HSL secondary. And then we need to open up a uh, key. And then this is actually really awesome. So for example, I can click on this little red uh, circle here. And then if I click on show mask. So basically it, it selected all the red uh, pixels within this range right here. And that's pretty cool. We can you know shorten this or shorten it up, maybe lengthen it up on that side and then move it over here and then maybe we'll shorten it up some more. So we can easily control what we select by uh, moving the uh, H panel here. And then uh, if we can go down to correction and um, <clears throat> we can maybe move this slider up a little bit into the reds and that will kind of punch everything up. And looking pretty good. You know, and then of course you can go to these other tabs, like say go to like I guess this magenta tab or purple. Not 100% sure what color exactly that is, but uh, we can go here uh, and click on show mask and we can kind of see what's selected. And we can kind of maybe punch this up to like the purples a little bit. And then that will kind of punch out, uh, you know, her shirt um, and kind of leave the rest of her face unaffected. But I did add a, like, a little shade of purple here because that's what, that's what was selected. And of course I could tweak that a little bit, but I'll probably just bring this down just by a little bit. And then, uh, so that's all good. We have a lot of controls here. You can even refine the mask a little bit. Uh, you can blur it out. So if we show the mask one more time and turn this on. Uh, we can add a blur to it, which will kind of uh, make things, uh, you know, like that a little bit, not as sharp on the edges, which can be good. Uh, let me put it down to like maybe nine. And that kind of help out the face a little bit. And then take off show mask. And that looks really good. I like it. And then let's go ahead and maybe go t take a look at the vignette. And if you want to like a dark vignette, you just have to go down to the negative values for the amount. Um, <clears throat> And that looks all right, but actually for the first time ever, I actually want to put it up to the positive value. Um, for some reason, I did look it on this clip. It kind of made the edges uh, sort of nice, um, and I was kind of actually a fan of it. But of course, there's some more controls down here to control your vignette. And then the next thing I want to take a look at is the curves, which is always the last thing I do um, in my color grading process, or usually the last thing I do. And uh, we can you can adjust the uh, brightness of the uh, image with the first tab here. It's just like using any regular curves panel. And then what I like to do is maybe create like a little S curve for each of these um, uh, controls because it kind of creates a unique look um, and, you know, kind of lets, uh, you know, like an artistic side of me to go uh, come out, which um, it's a good way to uh, get something going if you want to create something interesting. But um, I don't always recommend doing this, but I actually do like that. It looks pretty cool. Just creating some S curves with the three uh, RGB channels. And then um, <clears throat> uh, maybe here we can saturate it, maybe back to 115, see what we can get. And that looks pretty good. She might, she might be a little bit too orange, but in the end of the day, I actually like that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of using color. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or requests for tutorials, please drop a comment down below or check me out on my social media networks. Links in the description. And if this video has helped you, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials just like this. And guys, thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully I will see you soon.